Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have another um, books I've read video. I have this little series on my channel where I just talk to you about the books I've read in the past couple of months and my thoughts on them, like what I recommend them, or like absolutely like if you're looking for new books to read, like check them out, like kind of thing. So if you're interested, then just keep on watching. So I haven't filmed one of these in a while. But, over spring break, I read a lot of books, and because of quarantine, I've read a couple books too, so I'm super excited that I actually have, I'm like excited that I've accomplished all this in a shorter amount of time, so, because I went through like a dry spell, I guess you would say, that... I didn't read books like for a while like after Christmas break started like ended in school year like s spring semester started so that reminds me I'm gonna mention this one first because I don't have it with me my I let my friend borrow it so she has it right now but it's um, everybody always by Bob Goff and such a good book let me tell you I can't tell you enough about how great that book is like completely convicting about how you should love people and it's super eye-opening I think it's definitely I love reading Bob Goff he his stories man like I tell you like he's he's one crazy dude like but I love him like is awesome like I'm he seems like the nicest man ever like he has his phone number in the back of the book for anybody to call him and he answers them like what a dude like he's like a different caliber kind of guy I like ugh, like I can't like Bob Goff is on another level I it's so crazy and like it was a definitely a very like eye-opening book and it's kind of funny because after like while I was reading it I encountered people who were starting to read it as well and, like they had a book club and stuff so like we talked about it it was pretty crazy but definitely such a good book highly recommend and of course I recommended it so much that I let my friend borrow it and she has it now and she's in Korea so yeah there you go that's the first book and then I also read it's not supposed to be this way by Lisa Turkhurst and I read this um, a couple months ago, but this is another good book, and it's kind of like, what's the word? I'm blanking. It just kind of talks about, like, because she went through this period in her life where she was diagnosed with cancer, and, like, at the same time, she, w she and her husband were also separated and, like, going through counseling, and she was like super close to um wow i'm gonna hold on okay that's i look super white now but at least i don't have like all the blinds on me which is what the the look i was going for but anyways so back to the book she wow okay really anyways i had to fix the blinds because that was driving me nuts but i can't remember like where i stopped talking but she was, like, while she was writing this, she was going through, like, she had, she was going through this cancer diagnosis, and she and her husband were separated, and they were pursuing divorce, but, like, they were receiving counseling at the same time, so it just kind of, like, le they're, like, lessons she learned d going through that period, and, like, you know, why is it that we go through, like, difficult or traumatizing events like that like you know and it always goes back to the fall of course but just like lessons she learned during that time and it's kind of crazy like I read this at such a good time in my life to really be able to r relate and you know get so much information out of the book so I definitely highly recommend it and you know, it also pairs well with her other book uninvited you know just about disappointments and like failures and things like that. She's such a good author when it comes to things like that. She speaks to my like the depths of my soul, honestly. So <laughs> highly recommend Lisa Turkhurst. I love that woman. But 
I also read, of course, good old Agatha Christie, Death in the Clouds. Read this at the beach. Oh, there's my bookmark. Highly recommend it. It's, I love her novels. Not my all-time favorite. That would have to be And Then There Were None or Murder on the Orient Express. Those are bestsellers for good reason. So, yeah. Great book. Highly recommend. It's a, this is a really good one, actually. One, another one where it keeps you guessing and trying to figure out, like, how did the... How, I don't know how she does it. She always puts together, like, the craziest, like, murder plots. It's so dope. Like, Murder Mysteries, Agatha's the Queen, if you're looking for a good one. The next thing I read over spring break was Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia. Is that how you pronounce it in English? Owens. And I've seen, I've heard a lot of people talk about this, and it was like on Reese Witherspoon's book club, and like, just, you know, it's advertised everywhere, and some pa a pastor's wife, I'm, I want to say Holly Furtick, I'm not 100% sure on that, read it, and she recommended it, and it was on sale at Target, so I was like, you know what, okay, don't really read that many secular novels, like, let's go for it, and... Like, highly impressed. I love the writing. Very well done. And it's kind of a romance, but it's also very, like, coming of age. This, and I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but, she, like, the girl learns to... Well, but, anyway, the girl learns how to support herself and, like, survival and stuff like that. And very, like, independent and... It also, you learn about, like, the the swamp, like, the marshes, like, the, there's science in it. Like, it's actually pretty well written, and I was very impressed with this book. I, like, I recommend this one as well. It was a good one. I didn't think it was, like, raunchy or anything like that, which is always good. So, yeah, I actually really enjoyed it. So, very good. Highly recommend. Read it at the beach. This is a good beach book. You want a beach book? Get this one. There. It's something light, airy, like not too complicated to think about. And then the next thing I read was The Happy Wives Club. And I necessarily didn't really actually read this for marital advice, seeing as I, that doesn't apply to me. I was interested about this book because the author travels all around the world, like talking to different people about marriage and stuff so if you're into anthropology sociology psychology like global studies that kind of thing you'll enjoy this book whether you're a wife or not just to because it like you can see the culture and the differences in culture in the book the similarities between cultures the differences individualism collectivism like how that plays into society and when it comes to marriage and stuff so how, this was a really good book. I definitely obviously learned stuff, you know, for if I ever get married, but more about just, I read it to learn about other cultures and stuff. And it was really, really good. Didn't disappoint. So yeah, if that's interesting to you. And it's interesting because of course there's some secular perspective because she interviews couples who aren't religious and then she interviews people who do have some form of faith so it's just interesting like how culture plays into marriage like it's so good I love talking about this stuff and then the last book I recently finished was Love Lucy and it's by Lucio Ball herself and it's an autobiography or somewhat it's more I would say memoir because it doesn't um like, she doesn't talk about her life from, like, birth to death. It is a certain stage in her life. So she talks about, you know, her, her birth and then up until about when she marries her second husband. And then, like, that's where the book ends, kind of. And, of course, they, like, finish and say she died of this, like, you know, 20 years later or whatever. But, you know, since she wrote it herself, it's puts a lot into perspective 
of what it was like to be the queen of comedy and to be like the first woman to own a production company, I believe it was. Was it production company? Whatever Desilu, yeah, Desilu Productions. She was the first woman like to own a production company and run it. She was the CEO after Desi Arnaz stepped down. So, like she's such a amazing woman. It's like how did she do this? And just talking about her career in film, I did not know that much about her film career other than I Love Lucy, and it's like pretty amazing what she did before and after that. So, and like what she did before she had her film career. She wasn't even looking to be in movies. So it's just very interesting and just her passion for theater in general and stuff. And what an amazing actress she was and a mom. Like, it's crazy. Like, I learned so much about her and I just like love her even more. Like, Lucille Ball is also a queen. But anyways, that completes this video. I'm still reading things, so I have not set my books aside after this. I still am reading, though I have not picked up the book I'm reading in a, in a good week. Which is not a good sign, but seeing as I deleted social media for a week, that video is also coming soon at some point. I don't know exactly when, so stay tuned for that. But, anyways, that being said, that completes this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And always, as always, comment down below book recommendations for me. I love getting new books to read or, you know, a favorite series or where you get books. Like, just in general, anything about that's book-related, comment it down below. And I, nine times out of ten, will respond to it. But... Yeah, and subscribe for more content if you enjoy this thing or like college videos or just me being like crazy or a crackhead. Like, don't, don't hesitate. Subscribe before you leave. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.